Hello students, after discussing G protein coupled receptors and ligand gated ion channels, in today's video we are going to study third category of transducer mechanisms that is transmembrane enzyme linked receptors. This video is 11th in the series of videos on pharmacodynamics. Now as we all know transducer mechanism is a process by which an external signal in the form of ligand is converted to a biological response by the cell. Now look at this figure, this is a cell membrane. Now outside the cell membrane is present the extracellular fluid whereas inside the cell membrane is present the intracellular fluid that is the cytoplasm. Now this is the structure of a transmembrane enzyme linked receptor. Now transmembrane means across the cell membrane. So as shown in this figure, receptor is transmembrane. Now this is the extracellular domain of the receptor which is present outside the cell membrane and this is the intracellular domain of the receptor which is present inside the cell. Now this receptor has an extracellular ligand binding domain. It is connected uh, through a helical peptide chain to, a, to an intracellular subunit. And this region of the intracellular subunit has intrinsic enzymatic activity. Now this is the region where usually enzyme tyrosine kinase is found to be attached. Now in this region of the receptor are present uh, inactive tyrosine residues which are depicted here by the capital letter T. Now in majority of cases the enzyme or the protein Tyrosine kinase is found to be attached with these receptors. However, in few cases enzyme guanyl cyclase is found to be attached to the intracellular subunit of the receptor. Now if the enzyme tyrosine kinase is attached, the receptor is termed as receptor tyrosine kinase that is RTK. Now ligands that activate receptor tyrosine kinase are for example insulin, epidermal growth factor, nerve growth factor and many others. Now transmembrane enzyme uh, linked receptors are primarily activated by peptide hormones for example insulin. Now the receptor exists uh, in monomeric state. So this is the monomeric state of the receptor. Now binding of the hormone uh, for example insulin to the receptor induces dimerization of the receptor molecule and change in the conformation of the receptor. Now conformational change activate the enzyme tyrosine kinase which is located in this region. Now activated tyrosine kinase on one receptor autophosphorylates tyrosine residues on the other receptors. That is this tyrosine kinase it autophosphorylates tyrosine residues on this receptor and this tyrosine kinase phosphorylate tyrosine residues on this receptors. So the process is termed as the cross phosphorylation. Now as shown here in this figure all these tyrosine residues they are phosphorylated and they get activated by the enzyme tyrosine kinase. Now this increases affinity of these phosphorylated tyrosine residues towards proteins with SH2 domain. Thus proteins with SH2 domain bind to phosphorylated tyrosine residue and they get activated. Now phosphorylation activates all the signaling pathways, all the signaling molecules and the cell produces uh, the biological or the physiological response. So this entire process right from the binding of ligand to the receptor constitute the signal transduction pathway and this is how an external signal in the form of ligand produces the physiological response by the cell. So this is in brief on how transmembrane enzyme linked receptors produce physiological response. If you find the video useful, kindly like, subscribe and share this video. Thanks for watching this video.